Yeah, yeah. Quick wrap. Quick wrap. Like medium twenty two fresh white t shirt. Come ask you. Get your tickets ready. Get your tickets ready. Four four one one nine seven one one nine seven. Boom. Done. Done. <laughs> okay, coming up next, uh, another day here. Dave Wackex is going to talk to you about man to man defense. He's going to talk about all the forcing left. Okay, so only forcing left. There's so not to the baseline, left to the middle of the floor. There's only forcing left. Okay. Uh, kick it off here. We've got ready to go. Uh, variety. <laughs> right. okay. Okay. Players can just hang out for a second, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get started. I get to be the defense guy after all the fun offense stuff this morning. But uh, so I'm going to work on uh, force left man-to-man -man defense. That's the topic. Uh, it is a, a system that we put in this summer. It was the first time that I have run it. I've seen it now a lot more. We see it in our university league. Uh, I know now our men's, uh, our men's junior national team, Team Canada, are now running it across the board. They're talking about putting it in their system across uh, all programs. It, right now it sort of seems to be something that's a little bit trendy. Uh, why do you do it? Why do you force left? You force left because a lot of people are weak with the left hand. I mean, it's that simple. It's that easy. It's nothing more complicated than that. Uh, I put it in with our provincial team this summer. We put it in uh, in about three weeks or so. It wasn't perfect. I will say that this will take a commitment because some of your basics, your players are gonna have to relearn. The, the left closeout is gonna be the hardest part of it. Um, but I think for me, this session, yes, I'm talking about forcing left and I'm showing you a few ideas that we ran. There are some variations of things we do with the force left defense. There's also, I think if you decide to go back and not do this, I think all my drills can go back to your man-to-man -man defense. So if, if I'd say, hey, if you're watching this and you're going, ah, this isn't really for me, that's okay. But I think a lot of the drills that I do uh, can go back to whatever system that you run. How many people force sideline baseline here? Force sideline. Okay, who forces middle? Anybody force middle? Sometimes you do, yeah. Uh, who, who forces left? Has anyone tried this system before? Okay, so we've got a couple here. Okay, so uh, again, I, I think really it's just trying to trust that this will work. I think we found some obvious flaws in it. Um, I found some obvious flaws right off the bat with it that I'll share you sort of where it was for us. So it's not, I wouldn't say that I'm the guru at this. I wouldn't say that I'm perfect at this. I would say I'm a coach like you that would put this into my system. I found things I liked about it, things I didn't like about it, and these are just things to think about as you go forward. So if I'm a uh, high school coach, I think this is a system I would look at. I think the benefit for us this summer was it helped us get better with our left hand. So we now got so many reps with our lefts that are actually our left hand dribbling, our left hand attack got better. Uh, maybe he left here, but Coach Greg Jockums, he was the coach that tore it up uh, when we played against Sask this year, so I'm glad he's out the gym, so he won't counter uh, uh, what we ran, but there are things, like I said, that work really well with this and things that don't. So I'll show you sort of the, the whole piece, and then I'll break it back down and tell you how I'm going to teach each aspect of it. I feel like I'm cutting out here for you. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll go from there. So give me the orange team, give me four orange guys on D, and give me four non-orange on offense. A little bit of a size difference here so that the defense will look better. Uh, so no ball for the orange team. And then yeah, one ball for the offense. One ball for the offense. And just we need uh, wing spots and swing spots. So uh, here, offense there, offense there, ball there, and ball there. Okay, so I'm gonna just show you what it looks like. We're not gonna go live with it right off the bat, but show you what it looks like. So obviously, we are going to try to get the basketball to the left side of the floor. That's what we want to do with it. So the way that we play it is, and I'll show it to you more in the closeout, is we're going to shade to the left. So a lot of the terminology that I used to say used to be force left, and force left used to be, well, the players would think it would be all sorts of different things. So Canada basketball's new terminology or current terminology 
they'll say three things for ball pressure. So if they say force, force for them now, right now is, so I'm forcing him to the left, to his left hand. This is the most important thing. Everybody on the court, show me your left hand. Okay, this is the first step. If your team can't do this, don't do this. Now this is the next piece of running this. Point to the person you're facing, point to their left hand. This is the, the now that these guys are good to go. We're, we're set, we're ready to go. This is number one. Spend 10 minutes on this. Okay, so now we're going to force it to the left. So we're going to talk about our pressure. Canada basketball talks about force. Force is going to be now where I'm on his hip and I'm making him go. This would be if I'm getting him into a trap. This would be something else. So force on their terminolo terminology now is very aggressive. Okay, now we're going to talk influence. So influence means I'm going to just sort of yeah, still have an angle on them, split them, and I'm going to try to get them to the left. Then there's going to be shade left. So shade left is going to be where we're going to kind of square them up, but we're going to split them with our foot and get them to the left side. So shade is going to be us staying in front a little bit more and just trying to um, shade them to that side. So now you're going to have to pick your level of ball pressure. But what I would say to everybody on the ball today is we want you an arm away. So ball pressure, I think, is everything. I think if you're going to do anything in man-to-man -man defense, you have to teach good ball pressure. If you're not pressuring the basketball, then you're not, none of this is going to be effective. So we're going to be, your pressure is going to be an arm away. So if you can reach out and touch this jersey and arm away, then you have the right amount of pressure. I just kill my mic, maybe. Get up there. Okay, I'll keep talking. Uh, Tanner, I don't know if I kill my mic or not, but... It'd be okay. Okay, so I'll just, just keep shouting. Uh, so we're going to be an arm, arm pressure away, and now it's up to you of what you want to do for your, your angle. We said we were going to influence this summer at the start, so we, yeah, just a little bit of a turn and trying to go this way. The biggest thing with the kids were what is, what is force left and what is give left? And we were doing so much of this. Coach said, get into the left hand. I'm um, getting into the left hand. And we're giving hot drive lanes to the basket over and over again. So I would say I would like to influence left, but I would say if you're having trouble with that and you have athletes and we have some length here, we can shade left. So we can square up a little bit and just split them. And now we're arm away. We're just checking to see where we are and we're shading left. So now that we're shading left, we're talking one pass away. So when we're one pass away, who plays pack line defense in here? I'm going to play pack line before. So what do you do one pass away on pack line? You play in the gap. So the gap, you think about it, we're thinking about, we're sort of in an 18-foot, I think was the original perimeter they talked about, 18-foot uh, perimeter if you're drawn on the floor. So you're in the gap. You're not right tight on him. You're here. If he goes to his left hand, you're gonna, you can stunt and recover. So show me what your stunt and recover will look like on this. So yeah, so it's one step, so come back. So one step, you're going to swipe with it. You're going to stunt with your chest. You're here just to sort of, I tell players it's like a stunt. It's like a, a fake. It's like a bluff. I'm here to show that I'm in the drive lane until we can recover, and then I'm back to where I need to be. So when you're going to the left side of the floor, so no matter where the ball is, if we're one pass away, left side, we're going left. Good. You're in, you're in the gap, and if he tries to go there, you can stunt, and then you recover back. Okay, and if we're on this side, same thing. We're one pass away. We are getting the gap a little higher. Yeah, and that's the one flaw you'll see. Your players want to do two things in the gap. They'll want to go way back and say, well, I'm just going to play it safe, but then that's not going to help the recovery, or they're going to come way high, and now they're going to be too high for anything, and we're going to get back door. So we're going to be kind of yeah, below the level of the ball, but still, still there. So anything left, you're going to be in the gap, and that's the terminology that we're going to have. Okay, now, ball back here. So readjust. So good. So everybody left knows that, hey, I am now in the gap. Now, right side. We don't want the ball to go to the right side of the floor. What do you think we're going to do to take away that right side? Deny. Yeah, no, we're going to deny. Get up on him here. Deny one pass away. So anything going to the right, we're taking away. So we're kind of combining... On that right side, we're denying. On the left side, we're in the gap. So this takes some work and this takes some reps for your players to realize that it's not just the same way every time one pass away. So ball here, so adjust. 
So if we're going to go to the left, we're gap, and right, we're, yeah, good, we're deny. Okay, throw the ball over there. Yeah, just throw it over there. Good. Adjust where we are. Good. Help side rules are still the same. Probably a little bit more help, but we're still, yeah, same, still the same help side rules in the gap, and we're, and we're denying that side. So that's going to be a big part of what you're going to need to rep and work on is what we're doing one pass away. Okay. So that's kind of it. Now we're trying to get it to the left side. If we'll actually throw it up there. We'll talk quickly about rotations a little bit. And this is where it gets kind of all over the place. So if we give a left hand drive, so you drive to your left hand, you get beat. Yeah, so good. The gap is, the, sorry, the stunt is there to slow him down so that he can recover. So my thing that we taught is if we get beat, we're not peeling, we're recovering because the gap is going to slow him down and then I can get back to him. So if he beats you, pulls in a move on you and beats you, he gets by you, you stunt, you're trying to slow him down and you're trying to get back to the basketball. Everybody else, good. Good help side, we're still in rotation. So that's, for me, that's key. We get beat, we recover, we're not going to peel on it. Okay, if we get beat right side, same thing. It's just we don't want to go this way. He gets this way. Now our help has to step up. So this is where it gets a little bit tougher good because we don't want to come off of, once we get to this side of the floor, we, want to, we don't want to come off the strong side corner. So the ball's over there. Yeah, pass here. Yeah. So that would be on that. If he got this, this drive lane, if he gets this one, yeah, we can stunt exactly and stay. Now where the hardest thing becomes is, if he catches it here, okay, so he's left drive, let's say he gets right drive. Now we have corner. So this is tough, yeah, this is, because technically this is gonna be, your help's gonna come, and you're gonna come over. But, because he's one pass away, where are you gonna be on this? Because he's going to what hand? He's going, he's going right. So that's why we really gotta try to keep him out of the right lane, because now it's gonna put pressure on you but I'll show you what we're doing with the post. Now, if we're going left hand penetration, we're getting in, good. You're stunt there to slow him down. You'll recover, your help if we need it, and we're okay that way. Uh, okay, where's the fifth guy? Fifth guy come on the floor, and give me another, another person to match up with him. Give me one more, yeah, sure. So, let's uh, make you the post player. Let's have you come out to the perimeter, and, you can, and who's gonna guard the post? I guess we'll have you guard the post, I guess. Biggest guy, makes sense. That's good coaching right here. Okay, yeah, so, real post, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're the real post, you want to switch? Okay, so here's what I do on the post defense, and I do this with force left or with, with man stuff is, okay, can you hear me there? Yeah, that's better, okay. I feel like I'm about to sing here, this is great. Uh, okay, so what I do with the, with the post is, our rule on the post is, uh, you are not going to help unless, so if you're on ball side, you're not going to help. Okay, so you're going to stay with your post player. We don't want to give up this rotation. We don't want to give up this offensive rebound. So if he's guarding this guy, you're guarding him, but you're a stunter. So if we get penetration here, you're allowed to stunt, but close enough where you can still touch him. So as you stunt, you're touching him here, you can still feel him. If you lose him, then you have to go back to him because we do have help side back here. Okay, so come back. So ball side, the post is going to stay home. High post, come to the high post. Same thing. You're stunting, but you're not coming off. So now if he gets a right drive, a left drive, you're in the lane to stunt and slow him down. We'll recover, coming off him. Now, uh, come back here, ball there. Go down to the, the block there. If that happens, weak side, we're going to help. So post, you're going to help. Strong side, high post, weak side, you're going to help. Perfect. Yeah, you would dig here if you have to. You've got two here, and now he's the help. So now if we give up the left lane or the right lane, we have the big help back here. Does that make sense? So post help, strong side stays home, high post stays home, weak side, he's the helper. Okay, uh, let's show you. Let's show you what ball screens would look like. So let's just run one here. So come past the wing here. Oh, so pass the wing, come higher. Come up here, and you're gonna screen. You're gonna screen here, come a little higher. Okay, so this ball, ball screen, which way are you trying to get to of the, of the floor? Which hand are you dribbling with? Left. left hand. So we're gonna, on any screen that's coming to the left, 
we are going to chase it over. So you're going to force them. So come back here. You're going to force them into the screen, and you're going over top of the screen. So as he comes off it, because we said we're going to keep him left, we are keeping him left. Now our person guarding the screener, you're going to be, yes, you can play this two ways. We'll naturally go with a soft hedge. So what he'll do is you're containing. So you're going to be a little flatter, and you're going to be out and just, just containing the dribble, and you'll come back to him. That means then that you're going to have to help on the roll. Okay, so come back to it. Yeah, so soft hedge, come back. So come back to that ball screen. So ball screen's going left. Go screen it. Yeah, go grab it. Good, over soft hedge. Once you feel he has it, you're recovering back. We're fine. Okay, this is where it gets tougher. Over on this side. Yeah, pass it over here. Come get the, yeah, come get the pass. And you're going to go screen it. Okay, this is what uh, Coach Chris King talked about. Uh, and his teams always do so well, is ice it. I will tell you, this was the biggest problem that we had this summer was getting these ones consistently. We just seemed like we couldn't get the person on the ball with their chest to the sideline and taking this away. We were late a lot of the time, and we weren't there. But we wanted, what we want to do is ice it so it has to go back to the left side. So the person guarding the screener you need to come off and contain. So you're off that screen and you're containing here. So good, you're not, so if you try to dribble to the middle, you're not letting her come there, you're cutting her off, okay? So what's key here is, come back to this ball screen. I think what's so key is one, so you're guarding, who's guarding the basketball? You're guarding the, okay, so you're gonna be, you're gonna be nice. Okay, so as it comes over, the screen's coming, you're gonna get, oh, no, so you're gonna come up the lane you're not letting her get to the middle, and you're dropping soft here. So the call has to be early because you have to come back, see how you were guarding her. Go back, come back here. You're guarding the basketball. You've got to force her into the screen. You can't just let her have that way. So as it comes, you have to get high, and then you have to get soft on it. So now you can't, and you want to come a little bit higher. You have to be big here. You don't want her to come to the middle. I would say the thing I found the most person guarding the screener is, and this is just all ball screens come back, if I'm guarding him, I always want to just trail him. I just want to get behind him and say, okay, I'm guarding the screener. But if I'm going to, if I'm going to gap here, I need to come off and come early. So my path, come back, I'll see him go, I'll say, hey, ice, 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 go. I'm going to come off and say, I know where I got to be. I got to be here. Not worried about him. We'll have weak side here to help, or uh, help side here to help. We just have to get to position. So anything, as I said, anything that's going uh, to the left-hand side, we're going to try to get over. Anything going to the right, we're going to ice. Uh, I mentioned the, the national team. National team, they told me that they actually ice on both sides. So they will, they just want to send it, to, they call it weak. They just want to send it to the corner. For us, the over work because it just it was aggressive and it made people dribble their left but they will ice it on both sides uh, come back to the top now this was the piece that Saskatchewan killed us with Greg's still not here so I can talk about it but it was the middle actions the middle action there's a few things to do with it I think anything super high just go underneath it but I think the middle screen so you're gonna be the screener here we talked about wanting to weak it, so getting it, sort of, sort of icing this middle one and trying to get it to the left side. That's what the junior national team does as well. We had trouble with this, so we said we just had to go underneath it and play the percentages. So the sketch one hurt us because they were able to hit some shots on top, but we just had to say, okay, the screen's coming, so you're on the, you're on, oh, you're on the ball. You're just going to have to get underneath it and then come again. So as he's going to come off it, you've got to come back and then you gotta get him back to his left side. It's a little bit tricky, but for us in a, in a jam, it was the easiest way to do it. I think people will have different ways to do this. Uh, some people trap it even. Uh, that's the piece that I think when I run this again, I'm gonna look at this middle ball, or this middle ball screen part. Um, I think that's it for that part of it. So I can just have you guys off for a second. And keep, let's keep three orange shirts. So one, two, three, stay here and, and grab a basketball. Okay, so that's, that's the big system. That's the big piece of it. 
Um, I think where it starts is was the little stuff. So this is the biggest part that is the hardest part is the closeout. The closeout is what took us the most time. So let's just get uh, you on the wing, you on the block of the ball, and you behind him. You're going to be the next guy in. Okay, real simple drill. I would just warm up practice with. You got the ball. You're just going to pass him the ball. You're going to close out arm pressure, forcing him to his left hand. Okay, so you, so you think arm pressure close enough that I can touch him, but for, I'm gonna sh I'll shade him to his left. So that's going to be square him up a little bit, fl a little flatter, and we're trying to get him to that left hand. Okay, once you pass, you take a dribble, you keep him there, and then you'll just post enter here, and then we'll switch offense defense. Okay, go ahead. So there, good. Guard him for one, pass here, make the entry pass. Yeah, go ahead, pass it. So I would do this just to, just to work on a few things. You can see that they're going to struggle with how much ball pressure they put on. Everybody's going to want to play safe with it. You're going to keep going. You're going to want to see the angle that they come with. You're going to want to see how, if they overcommit to it. Good. So keep going. Coaches, just watch and see what errors you may see here. What are you seeing that they're having trouble with already? How about that one? Anyone see that? He got high on that one yet. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so hold up. So what are some of the errors we saw? Way too far back, way too soft. So I'm worried about getting beat. I'm sitting off it. What else? What's that? Okay. Opening up. that, And that's the biggest one that our team had trouble with is we just opened too much. Or like I said, yours kind of got high. You got way up here. Yes, I'm forcing left, but I am in trouble in recovery. So that's just a simple way for us to see what the closeout looks like. Now, I would take this drill and change it where you go to the corner. And so you're going to start from the block. You're going to pass, same thing, and cover him for one dribble. Yeah, take a dribble, cover him. Good. Once he picks that up, you're going to turn and tag the charter circle. Yeah, tar the charter circle there. You're going to pass. Now you're going to tag him with his foot, and you're going to get a second closeout. And now you want to force him to his left hand. So the hardest ones is not the first closeout. It was, it's the second closeout for us because they have habits. This one's easier on the baseline side. We'll move it over. So you guys are going to be live on this side, on his pass. You're not live on this one. Okay, go ahead. Good. Tag. Now you're back. Yeah. Good. Now you can set a rule where you can go ball touch. We'll go again. Big guy was excited to go. That's okay. Uh, I would say give, let him come a little bit more. Give him a little bit more time to recover. Yeah, you guys can switch spots. Yeah, you go to the corner. Okay, same thing. So there, good. First left, watch that ball pressure. Good. And you're back, keep them left. Okay, so that one's not bad because that's baseline force. Come back to this side, do the same thing. You stay in the middle as the defender. You two guys are corner and, and wing here. So pass the wing first. Good, T yeah. Close out, dribble, yep, yeah, contain it. Now you're gonna tag and now you're left. Yeah, so you're gonna, good. So we wanna get them left. Yeah, we want to get into the left hand. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Gonna go live with it, except you're gonna pass the corner first. So that's the dummy one. You're gonna go live on this one. And you're gonna get into his left hand. Good, yeah, recover, tag. Now you're back. Left and stay in front. Good, so it's the, it's the left force or the left shade, but it's then left, and then I have to cut him off. I have to square him up and get in front of him. So that's. Let's try it one more time. So there. Good. Tag. Back. And now you're in front. So what's he doing as a defender? What are we seeing? What are we seeing? Do you hear it? You guys had the idea? He's playing soft right now. He's scared to put ball pressure on. I don't care if you get beat with this. I want you to get up on the basketball. Uh, I want you to get him to his left. You're, he's going to be slower to his left. You're going to have time to recover on that. Okay, let's try it. Good. Recover. Good. You're back. Now you're to left. Good. Stay in front. Good. That was pretty good. The thing with the left hand force is you, you have to trust that sometimes you're going to give up a left hand drive lane. But trust the fact that the turnovers are going to go up, that the shot shooting percentages are hopefully going to go down, that you're going to have a chance to cause them to be not as quick. So yes, you're going to go crazy as a coach the first times you run it and say, we are giving up. We're just giving this left hand lane. But the numbers do sort of balance itself out. 
and you hope that it does eventually. Okay, so I think closeouts, if I do this, I would do this every, every day I would work on closeouts. Uh, do I have a coach volunteer? Someone that just wants to come and stand and pass? I need an assistant coach. I'll pick some, yeah, come on up here. Okay, uh, you're gonna go to the wing. Actually, I'm picking on you on defense. I'll pick on you. You go in there, you go in the wing. Come stand at the top, coach. And so you're gonna play, give me one more defender, actually. Give me one more, we'll go two men here. So just another little breakdown. You're gonna guard him. You're gonna guard him. Nobody guards coach. Coach has the ball. Okay, and this is just a real simple one for us to work on our one pass away action. So when we're one pass away, where do you think you're gonna be one pass away? And what's that called? The gap, okay? And where are you gonna be one pass away to the right? Deny, yeah, because you don't want the ball to go to the right side. We want it to go to the left. So you can't steal coach's pass, but coach is just gonna have the ball. Coach is going to pass the ball. We're going to adjust our position from it. So he can pass it anywhere he wants. Good. So now we're going to adjust. Where, where are you going to be? Because you're, how many, yeah, you're going to be help, right? And now you're up on that. So ball back here. Coach can swing. Now where are you going to be? Good. Yeah. So I'm, now I want you guys to try it a little bit live. Coach is going to swing through. I want us to talk all the way through. So call our position. Where are we in? Yeah. Good. Talk, swing. Good. Yeah, good, we're there. Good, ball back. Now coach can take uh, one dribble. We're not going to make coach go to the rim, but coach can take a dribble to, the le to that left.
hoop. They just put it in. It's contested, but they just score it. The clock will stay the same. We won't reset it. Okay? So that's, that's the way it works. So you guys are trying to score. You guys are trying to defend. You guys are trying to get a stop in 51 seconds. I will reset it for anything that I think is off base. If you get a steal, great question. It's like you knew this already. We run five seconds off the clock. So we'll run, we'll stop it, you'll kick it back out to me. We'll take five seconds off the clock for any turnover, and then we're going again. Okay, so 51 seconds on my start. You guys are trying to score. You guys are ready and go. So we're back to 51 seconds. Okay, so right back here again, we'll go ball back in. Whatever you guys want. Yep. Good talk. Good, yep, yeah, play it. Good? Good, so I, again, depending on your philosophy, I might say maybe that's a middle lane, maybe that's a foul, whatever it is. I'm gonna be tough on these guys because they're gigantic. 51, we'll reset again. So again, we were just staying in it, and I, I can stay in this all day if I wanted to. And what I also do is they pass it back to the coach. Once you start to get a rhythm, ball out, and the coach would just fire it back in. It's live on the coach's pass. So you can make this a quicker tempo drill. Um, I would say with subbing, we have a rule. I'd like to keep the four guys in for the whole drill so they get out of it. If you don't have time for that because it might go long, uh, I would say my rule in this drill is the guy that makes the mistake has to stay in. So if I said that, you know, you missed the closeout, then you have to stay in. We can rotate anywhere else too. So that's a way to put this drill in. Again, this is a drill you write down your practice plan nine minutes and it takes 29 minutes sometimes, depending on how you feel. Okay, we're going to play again. Here we go. Ball's coming to you. Don't steal my pass. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, keep talking. Good. Stay in front. Good. Good, so that'll be five seconds off, ball back here. Coach someone, you got five off the clock. And ball back. Okay, here we go right away. Good, ball back here, find it again. Here we go, ball back in, find the closeout. Good, yeah, good. Good, checked out, ball here, whoever has it. Yeah, ball here, we'll finish this out. Keep going, we're playing out. Good, and hold up. You got foul on that for sure. Uh, so what would happen, uh, and you good, you guys gonna have a seat here right now. That was great. Okay, so uh, what's gonna happen in that drill the first time you run it, the offensive team's gonna take it lightly on the defensive team. They're not gonna try to attack them. They're gonna be, oh, those are my friends, I'm not gonna attack. You'll switch your defensive team to offense, and they will roast your, your other team. And they will go at them, them in that drill, and I think that's what you have to encourage for that drill to really work is it's okay to try to reset the other team. You want to try to keep them in this drill. You're trying to run the offense. You're trying to get into them. If you want to build to it, you can add ball screens in. You can add the fifth man in. All the other pieces to it. But that's just a, I, one of my favorite drills for defense to kind of get some intensity going. Do I have a question? Or? Yeah, for the, let's say you're running with eight. The other people, they just be rotating in really quickly. Yeah. So I would do it in. I would do it in 51. Now, if you had another crew in, you could change the offensive team out. So you could go, let's say you had four, four, and four. You go four on D. This offensive team could run it. You could say, okay, that's been a few possessions. Let's switch offense, but keep defense in. I just think it's kind of like a, it's like a hustle drill, but it's a team defensive drill that way too. Okay. Um, I would say too, one thing, and I won't go here. One thing that I would do with that left rotation or any rotation is, and I know uh, Coach King did it earlier, as he started with advantages. So I would start a shell drill, a four-man shell. I would start them, uh, give me one guy back out here. Actually, you two guys back out here. So just, I'm sure you've all seen these before. But I would go four-man shell, you need a ball. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I would go with an advantage. So I would say, yeah, ball out here. Say we start him, so four-man shell, let's say. I'd say you have to start toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. So now he's going to have a clear advantage. I know you're facing that way still, but you're foot to toe. Yeah, foot, you're foot to foot. And then he would go whenever he wanted to. This will force your rotation right off the bat. If you're working on the right or left, so we're say we're going to work on that left rotation. I would just start him in that way and say, okay, we're going to play shell. Now I know he's got an obvious left. It's going to make us work on a rotation. So it's a good, good way in the half court 
for us to just to force our rotations that way. Good, you guys can have a seat. Other thing I would do is, I saw that this summer, if you're running a set, let's say you're running, I don't know, pass to the wing, you ball cut, you come and ball it. Sometimes start your offense in the second and third actions. So run your set, so if it's pass, cut through, ball screen, we get to a stagger, start the ball in the stagger. Start the ball in the ball screen, in the half court. You can just have a static start, but start it deeper in your offense, because so many times it's just past the wing and we just run through it. Start it out at different spots on your offense. I think it's a good way for you to get different reps defensively and, and really work on different actions. So maybe you don't have to run a ball screen drill specifically for that. You can run a drill with your action that you're already deep into that on your set. Does that make sense? Other thing I always do too is half court stuff. We always try to bring it in from three quarters. So I would put defensive team here, offensive team depending on speed, but probably on that, that volleyball attack line and bring them in this way. I hate starting them static in the half court here. I just think you gotta get a little transition flow to find your spots and get the ball in to start your offense. So another way just to work on some half court defensive drill stuff. Um, so I think for me, if you want more information on the left, I gave you kind of a quick idea of it. I would say for me, you need to commit to it if you're gonna force left. I think it does help you, I think it does work, but you need to get reps because there's some habits that they're gonna have as basketball players that are gonna be tricky for those rotations and those closeouts, but I do think it works. Uh, I used it this summer, I really liked it. I thought we got better at it as we went. My spot would be, I maybe didn't have enough time to put that type of system in, but I did find success with it. Um, I would say to um, try these things. And again, if you're a little bit nervous about it, you can always come back with it because if worse comes to worse and you try this system, you're just trying to work in your weekend and it, you get a good number of reps off that as well. Uh, I'm gonna open it to any questions anybody has. Yeah, go ahead. Do you use the force left as your primary uh, sort of defense or do you use it as another defense like a zone or a man defense? Yeah, that's a great question. So he said, do you use it as a primary or is it sort of your secondary? I thought it was gonna be my secondary, but when I started to look at it and look at how much time some of that stuff needed and then watching some of the teams that do it and the University of Calgary and the women's side of university running a lot, that is who they are and they become that. And we became that this summer of, we just didn't have time to work on both. I've thought about that, but I just don't know if you get good enough at that closeout, that ice, that chase over if you just do it here and there. I'd be interested to see, I think there's some coaches that probably have done it that way, but for us it kind of had to become every day for us just with our short training schedule. So yeah, that's a great question though and something I've thought about too. I only use, like I've only used the force left a couple of times. Yeah. Um, primarily because it takes a lot of effort to put it in and get kids to be good at it. Yeah. And we used it against select teams that had maybe weaker dribblers to, to try and to, to get the, the turnovers, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would use it as the main. And I guess what I didn't talk about was if I'm going to make this effective, I can't force left when the ball is right here. So what we had to do was we had to pick it up earlier. We had to pressure it at half. We had to get it out of the middle and we had to get it to the side, to the left side right off the bat. So I didn't show that or talk about that. We had to pressure it because if you let them just come down here and then you're trying to get them to the left side, a good guard is going to pick you apart. So you need to speed them up. As soon as they get over half, you need to start working them to this side. Work them over here, and now you've already established the left side. Now it's a lot easier to keep him here if he starts here. I think that's one piece too, is put a little ball pressure on early and try to get him over to that side. Any other questions about this or any sort of man stuff or any sort of drill stuff? Oh. Yeah, you can for sure, and you could, you could trap that screen. We didn't do it, but I've seen that done before, and you could definitely get trapped in different spots. Um, one back there, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying they got like a hard hedge? Yeah. Just a hard hedge it instead? You could, yeah, you could hard hedge it and send it back. Then what would you do with the guy underneath? Would you, because where would you put him, I guess? Well, he's guarding the ball. So, so he could just, 
He could stay there and you could send him back. Yeah, I, I mean, that is something that I haven't done, but I, I know what you're saying. You hard hedge it and you just send them back. Then you just have to make sure that, you, I guess you're going to have weak side. Well, the slip and the weak side is going to be there because now you're high here. You're sort of sitting on the ball side and that, like right down the gut. I like the ice because hopefully it can kind of speed the ball handler down to the corner, but that's something you could look at. I've not tried it that way, but it's something to think about. Any other questions? Okay, well, I'm going to be done with a little bit of time to spare. But uh, again, I just want to make sure that I say this. I really want to thank Tanner. I don't know if he's in the gym or not. Uh, he's over there. Uh, that guy, you guys are lucky to have him in Saskatchewan. I would like to steal him and take him to Alberta if I could. He is the MVP of this thing. I know when talking to Rich this morning and Chris this morning, uh, that guy does so much work and, and does this stuff so well. So I know everyone will, but make sure before you leave tonight, thank him because he is the uh, brains behind this and this clinic is, is one of the best. So uh, I want to thank him. And also let's give these guys a round of applause. We've been sitting here all day. So I'm going to be done. If you have any questions, come talk to me. I really appreciate this. Have a good night. And that is that. <laughs>